Good day, Brittle Planet listeners. This is Eric Peterson, quarantining from Salt Lake City today. And today I have the honor of being joined by Tommy Karavik from Camelot. How are you doing today, Tommy? Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm doing awesome over here in Canada. Good. Oh, so you're in Canada. Yeah, I'm in Canada. Good. And how are quarantining? How is quarantining there? Uh, it's, I guess it's been pretty good. I mean, it's, uh, everything is kind of still, you know, you have to wear a mask and, uh, everything is, uh, kind of weird, like, I guess, uh, everywhere in the world, but, uh, we don't really see a lot of it. I mean, it's still those lines in the grocery store and the plexiglass and, yeah. uh, you know, that, all that stuff. But, um, uh, I think you can, you can do most of, of everyday things, uh, over here and, at this uh, at this time though, so it's, there is a oh, there's a law for masks inside now. But. Oh, there is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is it's so it's kind of a stark difference compared to you know Sweden where where they're kind of just trying to live life as normal. Yeah. Right. I I, I had I was lucky I was over here. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, but they uh, I think they approached it the way you know like they. they they kind of um, asked people to just be civil about it and um, they didn't really enforce any laws or anything, but, and kind of said like, we're gonna keep things, uh, you know, like we're, we're all grown ups, you know, take your responsibility. Uh, but, so it, it hasn't actually been that crazy over there. It's been it's been a little, you know, in the beginning where it spiked a little bit, but, but I think they've managed to flatten the curve. I think it was, you know, a couple of deaths every day now, but, uh, uh, not and not anything crazy anymore, you know. Yeah, yeah it's funny because I I talk to my Swedish friends and they all say, "Yeah, they told us we have to stay six feet apart." And then we tell them, "Well, when this is all over, we'll go back to being our twenty feet apart." <laughs> exactly. That's the <laughs> Swedish way. That's the Swedish way. Yeah, yes. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Fine. So I, let's talk a little bit about your your new release, the I Am Empire. The what was the inspiration for the DVD and and the reasoning behind your choice of the venue? Yeah, the I mean, uh, we we've been thinking about doing a DVD now since it's three albums in with me, and uh-huh. uh, we kind of wanted to show people what what we are about as a live band today. You know, like what uh, what can people expect if they go see a live show with Camelot? And um, kind of kind of make it a timeless thing, you know. Like, you know, if it creates a lot of emotion. You know, it's, it's seeing something uh, a live uh, concert like that, and we want to give that to people. You know, like to to always be able to just like put that on and feel great. You know. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's it's totally true. And I will say, having seen Camelot three or four times, that. If anybody, the people who are listening to this, if you've not seen a Camelot show, buy the DVD because you will be totally impressed because the lights, the majesty of the whole thing is is what's the most impressive part about a Camelot show. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know, that's something we, we worked a lot during the years on, on, on the live performance to make it, you know, a really, a really a, an interactive experience in a way. You know, where, where people can go to a Camelot show and get, you know, there it's a lot of interaction. It's a lot of um, meaningful exchange of energy. Yes, yes. And, and and part of that is you and, you know, you're charismatic on stage because you you've really you very much engage the, the crowd and they sing along. And that's that's part of the whole fun of a Camelot show, too, is just the the exchange of energy back and forth. Yeah, well, thank you. I we we, um, we had you know some stuff that we've been doing live for for quite some time, and we just felt felt it's time to you know put that on, you know print it in a way so that we can um, you know show show people what what this is what Camelot is about right now. And then I think we really succeeded doing that when I when I watched the DVD now, um, also with the uh, choice of of songs and. And everything. I think it was a, a perfect blend. And then, what was the what was the um, the goal behind the or the the reason behind the venue you guys chose? Did it have any significance to it, or just a good spot? I mean, we we love that venue. First, first of all, we've been you know we were one of the first bands that played that venue when they you know reopened after 
uh, refurbishing it and opening it up for more people. So we we um, we love that venue. It's a, it's a great venue. But I mean, it's first and foremost, um, the Netherlands has always been a really great place for Camelot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in terms of support, and I think we've had like. T- 10 or 11, 12, maybe, maybe even uh, uh, sold out shows in a row in, in, in Holland. So for us, it was kind of a no brainer to do it there also because, um, you know, Schiphol is a really big air- airport and it's really close by. Yep. It's an hour drive. So it was easy kind of for, to pr- provide that opportunity for people to go and travel to see us for the live DVD. You know, it's more options to fly there and, yeah. and, uh, and everything. So everything kind of worked out. And, and then the the other the other really fun thing about the the um, DVD is you've got a lot of guests that come on, um, and they're all guests that I mean, most of them I've seen on tour with you guys. I don't know that I have seen Liz Liz Reed. Have she has she has she toured with you guys? Has Amaranth toured with you guys? Yeah, both Amaranth and she has a. As an entity, oh okay, all right. <laughs> uh, I mean, a lot in the past though. It was, it was, it was still when I joined Camelot or before I joined Camelot. I was, uh, I was trying out a little bit for for a tour uh-huh. to just sing backups and come out for sh- for a song or two. And she was, she was um, already a seasoned Camelot veteran by then. So, oh okay, all right. So yeah, so yeah, it was a big celebration with a lot of a lot of guests that actually sang on the on the songs uh, in the studio. Album. Yeah. So, so for those that don't know, like you've got, um, let's see, there's Liz that comes out. You've got, um, let's see, who else comes out? Uh, I'm trying to remember well, now. Lauren, Lauren Hart. Yeah, Lauren Hart. Consumer. Yeah. Arch Enemy. Yeah. Um, uh, Charlotte Vessels from the Lane. Yeah. We got Sasha Pett coming out on guitar solo. We got the Eclipse um, uh, Quartet playing on one of the songs uh yeah it's just uh, it's just a lot of a lot of guests <laughs> so so i mean i know you've toured with all these these girls and, and even more than that you've toured like with uh with with battle beast and stuff too and they've done some stuff on stage with you do you ever get intimidated by these girls because their their sound is so beautiful and then they flip the switch and they sound like demons I think it's uh, you know it's getting. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think it's a uh, it's a good addition though to to the DVD, you know, to be able to show that palette of of the band uh, as well, because it's been a part of the band for for quite some time to have female vocals and and uh, uh, you know, this is some songs that we can't play without that. So yeah, 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 and and so. The other thing I was going to mention is you had Sasha come out there, and I didn't I didn't realize until I started watching the DVD and read a little bit about it that he produced um, your one of your records. What was it like working with Sasha? Well, Sasha has basically been a part of the band for twenty years or something. So he's he's not a part of the band, but kind of a crucial part of the sound because he's been producing all of the albums. Um, so you know. For us, you know, working with Sasha is always, you know, he's kind of like the sixth member of the band in a way because he he pulls the sound together and brings everything into, um, you know, the sound that is that people expect to hear from Camelot. Yeah, yeah. So that's you know yeah. that's a very important it's a very important factor. And then and then just to have him was that the first time you'd ever had him on stage with you guys? For me, you know, as a, as a uh, you know, singer of Camelot for yeah. three albums. That was the first time he was ever on stage with me. But I know he also made a, an appearance on the first live DVD um, before I was even in the band. But so, you know, that's how long he's been doing this. So for me, it was amazing because we worked really well together and we we, we share a lot musically. So um, to, to be able to have him on stage there was really magical. Yeah, yeah. So as far as the... As far as the other guests you had on stage, um, is there any others that weren't on the DVD that you can remember from your time with Camelot that you've really enjoyed and had a fun time with on stage? 
Oh, there's been so many, but <laughs> I know, I know there has. It's just, I, I, but yeah. it's, 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 a, it's, a, that's the best part about Camelot is you, you share so much with everybody. Right. No, it's, it's just that, uh, of course, uh, the one, the one and only is missing, and that's my, that's my wife. You know, we had a lot of fun, and that's how we met. You know, on, on the Camelot tour. So, so that's like the, yeah. She ne- she was never on an, on the on a song in the in the studio though but uh, and uh, she uh, you know I, I will always remember those tours as one of, as uh, you know the best tours because of you know how everything played out and uh, I, I, just, I just love her uh, of course of course I love her but yeah. I love her energy and her uh, professionalism and and her just raw talent when it comes to music so so that was the that was the golden egg that was missing. <laughs> yes, but I mean there there is the future, and who knows what will happen in the future? You guys might have a chance to bring her on board. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I, I mean, she's uh, yeah, yeah. We'll have to we'll have to see. You know, like how how everything plays out. Like I would love that, and I, I know the fans would love that, but um, you know. We're not going to say too much, but you know who knows in the future. Yeah, how how's her growl? Does she have a growl? No, no, she she doesn't have a growl. <laughs> she's a, she's a singer, and yeah. I think that's also you know something that I wish to see a little more of. Like I think it's it's a little bit of a trendy thing now to be able to sing and growl and do everything. It's kind yeah. of like a I don't know, but um, also just like the fantastic singers out there need to be celebrated as much because. That's really a craft that that's really hard to master. Yeah, to yeah. just be good at one thing. And that was one of the reasons I this last tour I really enjoyed when you brought Nora up on stage because I think Nora has she has a little bit of a raspy voice, but it's it's comparable to Cobra's voice. You know, it's got a little bit of a rasp to it, but it's a very very pretty voice, which is what you know, it's a good voice. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, me me myself, I, I'm also not a growler. I'm, I've I've been focusing on trying to work on my on my singing voice, you know, which is tough enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's mastered that, but um, you know, it's it's a it's a trend I think right now to sing and growl and I mean it's it's cool. It's cool to be able to do that, but um, but it's not for everyone. Yeah, if I, if I was at a Camelot show and I heard Tommy growl, I would think that he was either possessed or he was dying. <laughs> <laughs> Or he was desperate. Yes, or desperate. Yes, yes. So um, you mentioned um, you mentioned uh, this, the holes. We talked a little bit about the re- the DVD and some of the stuff, and then um, uh, you had the children's choir that came on too, which was really cool. Right. Yeah. That's that was a, a big highlight, I think, for for everyone, but maybe for Thomas um, the most because his his son was kind of at the helm of that children's choir. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that was, I think it was hard for Thomas not to uh, get emotional there because it, it was, you know, it was a big venue, it was a crazy crowd. And then just to be able to see his son up there, you know, kicking ass. I think that must have been really cool for him. Yeah, yeah. And then, so you, you, we talked a little bit earlier. So is Camelot working on anything new then? Yeah, I mean, we're working away as we speak. We're, we're um, you know using this time to to work on uh, we have a you know we have a lot of lot of musical ideas so that that feels really great you know we, we just got to choose pick and choose to make sure the album has the, the right vibe and the right um, cadence in a way yeah yeah but we have a lot of good good stuff coming the one thing I was going to ask you before we moved on is I know Lauren has been a, a really big part of you guys. Um, and and I just wondered if Lauren's friend Larry ever showed up to lighten things up while you guys were on tour. Uh, she's she's too fun, you know. She's <laughs> she's kind of like a caricature of herself a, a little bit. Yeah. So uh, so she you know she spreads a lot of joy, of course, and a lot of laughs. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think he made an appearance or two. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever get to meet Logan? Yeah, I met oh, Logan a couple of times. Good, good. Absolutely. He was, uh, I think the first time 
Lauren was with us was um, when we opened up for Iron Maiden in San Bernardino. Um, and that was kind of the, her first uh, show with us. And, and then I remember Logan was there helping us out with some technical stuff around everything because it was kind of kind of a messy day with, with broken uh, a lot of broken uh, gear like a sound sound I th- think it was the circuit board the sound cor- uh, sound board yeah that was, uh, fried or something like an hour before a show oh. and it was 4th of July weekend in the middle of nowhere so it was a little, little hard to get a new one so we we kind of had to find a uh, someone found found an, like a monitor desk behind the stage uh, that we could use as a front of house, but we have to had to have it behind the stage because there was no time to you know set it up outside. Yeah, so yeah, someone yeah. mixed us from behind the stage. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. It's amazing. It's only forty thousand people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's I mean, it's just a small crowd. I mean, if something goes wrong, it's not a big deal. No, 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 no one remembers that. So. And and it's an Iron Maiden crowd, so I mean, it's not like they would get pissed or anything. No, they don't. They won't even throw shit at us or anything. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you when you talked about opening for Iron Maiden. Um, I've talked to a few people, and they said nothing really puts you on your A game like opening for Iron Maiden. What was it like for you to open up for them? Yeah, I mean, uh, we were ready to go, but then. Um, uh, you know, I was stoked, of course, you know, who, who wouldn't be stoked? It's kind of a pinnacle moment in, uh, in your career to be able to, to do that. But yeah, it was a lot of stuff that, that happened that day somehow. And uh, I think I, I, you know, there was um, a lot of technical issues. I think the band was, you know, bringing the A game, but the technical issues were, were just, uh, you know, one by one, one, yeah. one after another. So, um, you know, we, we I think we had a great show in the end, but it was a little bit tough in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you grew up in Sweden. Um, what were some of the singers you and or bands that you listened to as a child that influenced you today as a singer? Well, the biggest the biggest one I would say that I uh, listened a lot to was Michael Jackson in the in the beginning. Nice. Like uh, growing up, that was my hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, in music and that was before I even started listening to metal or anything I think I, I, I was a late bloomer when it came to that kind of harder music I was listening to Queen a lot yeah but it was uh, it was Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson to begin with but then uh, I started listening to more more to a, a little different music so I started listening to a lot of uh, of course I wasn't bo- I wasn't born when when uh, uh, Coverdale and those guys were kicking ass, yeah. Uh, but uh, or I was born, but I was just a little bean. But yeah. Um, so I started. I heard about this guy called Jorn Lande, uh, which is kind of like the you know successor of those kind of singers. Mm-hmm. So Lalan Jorn Lande. Uh, yeah, I can't, I'm trying to think now, but that that's kind of how it started, at least. And then, of course, you had a few along the way. I mean, Jorn's a good one to to just say, yeah, that was my influence. I mean, that you can't really go wrong with that one. No, no, he's like one of those guys that has just has that epic voice that has like five voices in in one in one note. Yes, <laughs> you know, like thick as. Uh, I don't know. It's just crazy, and the way he did, did runs and bluesy stuff, and mm-hmm. always loved stuff. And uh, I kind of also listened a lot to those kind kind of pop divas that did ad libs galore, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston, and those those people just amazing technical singers. Yeah. Uh, when they were when they were great, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of stuff that from there, and I think. I, you know, I utilize, I made it my own style to bring a little bit of that into metal. Which is, I mean, which is something I I appreciate from being from the 80s, you know, with a lot of the 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 technical and the high higher end voices and none of the growls, you know, a lot of that stuff that I grew up with is one of the reasons I'm drawn to Camelot is because I love that 
that technical sound of the of the the voice you know it's 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 a it's a nice voice to listen to and paired with heavy metal music it's even better yeah oh that's really cool i mean that's uh yeah when i and i started doing i have, have another band called seventh wonder too so when i started doing that band and and uh, singing that way i i just i don't know i i hadn't heard that a lot in, in other in other metal music yeah. like that ad libby things all the time and and uh, like technical approach but still with an emotional touch I, I i felt that i was not in that music so much yeah because i i mean for me like i always i always like like bands like queensrike that had that really with jeff tate had that very operatic voice and 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 that's what to me that's what you bring now to the to the metal music so okay yeah well, that's awesome i mean that's a uh, definitely uh something that we that we uh, want to do because uh, it's kind of missing well i was gonna since you brought it up i would probably disappoint a lot of people if i didn't ask you about seventh wonder and if if you have anything working with that project at all right now yeah, right. Right now, I'm not too involved. I have I, I wrote a little bit of music for it already, but uh, right now my focus is just to to finish the camel stuff. Yeah. Um, so that we have an album to tour with when, once this COVID craziness is over. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, we have it's, the other guys are working the way as we speak, just demoing songs and and writing in the in the rehearsal room. So so we will have an album. Um, my guess is early 2022, but ah, okay. uh, yeah, so it won't be eight years in between these albums, but but uh, uh, definitely stuff in the works. Good, good. And I was going to ask you too, um, can you, I mean, there's so many different kinds of metal that came out of, has come out of Sweden lately. Is is there any other is there any other music that you're listening to right now that since you're you're not really heavy into your own stuff is what what are you, what is Tommy listening to right now? Oh man, you would be so disappointed. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I I actually don't listen to a lot of uh, new stuff at the moment. I. Um, I tend to not listen to to music when I when I'm creating, but uh, if I listen to something and I, and if it's something Swedish, it would probably be like this Swedish singer songwriter style musician oh, okay. called Lars Winnerbeck, which is kind of like kind of like the Dylan of of uh, Sweden okay. in a way. All right. So that would be that would be that, and that's kind of the beautiful thing with contrast. Like if if I want to just relax or something, I put on something, just acoustic, you know, with a one guy singing, yeah. and then I create a music for symphony. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I I'm not the, I'm not gonna say I'm all about metal. I mean, last night I happened to put on some of Tina Turner's greatest hits, and I was totally jamming oh. to Hall and Oates last night. I love Hall and Oates, so. Oh, great! Yeah, that's I think that's important to be able to embrace all sorts sort and styles of music too and not just you know put yourself in a corner because it's there's so much great music and just because it's not metal it doesn't mean it's not good yeah exactly and and, and the cool thing about like hall and notes is if you you watch like daryl hall has that show where he gets on from his house it's like daryl's house or something like that and he does a lot of stuff with different people, like he brings Cheap Trick on there, he brings ZZ Top on there, and Kenny Loggins, and he sings their songs with him, and it's the coolest thing ever to just to hear how how much range he has in what he does. Yeah, I mean that's awesome. I think music should always be about just being music, yeah, and not put in a in a in a folder, you know. Yeah, it, it's just like if it's good, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. my last my last question for you I have today is it's one I've I've been asking everybody and I've gotten some pretty really, really different answers. But I'm curious if you can give me a song by Camelot, by title or content, that best describes the state of the world as we know it right now. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry about that. There's some someone calling me. I just got to. Oh, that's fine. Gotta, 
Sorry, can you repeat that question? So, a song by Camelot, by by title or by content, that you feel like best describes the wor- state of the world right now? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would, I would say, let's see. That's a tricky one. I think I think they all, in in a way, do that. Yeah, they, they do. I mean, try yeah. to try to write about, but I think maybe um, uh, "Burns to Embrace" from the last album. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because <clears throat> that's kind of the, you know, kind of the point we are with humanity right now. Um, I'm not gonna t- say too much about uh, about that. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, make sure that people listen and, and make their own opinion about it but uh that would be my choice yeah that's a that's a great choice so well tommy i appreciate your time and for everybody out there next uh next friday is the 14th right the new dvd comes out absolutely and and like and like i said don't just pick up the cd don't just listen to it put it on a dvd and watch it in your theater room because that is the closest thing you're going to get to actually being at a camelot show yeah, that's awesome. So, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Tom.